In this video, we're going to be talking about posting and RS-232 communications using the NC editor. So the first thing we have to do is get toolpath on our part. And then it comes down to posting and then either saving it directly and bringing it out to the machine or sending it to the machine via RS-232 communications. Now, the first thing we do before we post the code is make sure we have the correct machine. And if we expand the machine, the correct post processor. So we want to make sure we have the right information for both the machine and the post. Now, to post the code, all we have to do is either right click on milling job and say post or there's this little button right here that looks like a controller. So we're just gonna click this button right here to create the NC file, wait for it to process, and then it pops up right here on the posting tab. And there is all of our code right there. So now we have a choice. Either we save this directly by right clicking and just saying save as, and then I can go ahead and save it wherever I want. So I'm gonna go to part files here and just say save. And now I have a copy of that NC file saved. Now, if you don't know if you should just save it directly and bring it out to the machine, it usually means you haven't done some testing and you need to read through the code, make sure everything's safe. But I could also edit all of this code. So if there's certain lines in here that I wanna take out, maybe these blank spaces or something like that, I can right click in here and then say NC editor. And this is going to launch this code into the NC editor, which you could also launch using this little button right up here. And this gives us an opportunity to modify the code, make changes to it, whatever we need to do. So we're just waiting for it to load up now. And there it is. So in here, I have the ability to read through the code and it makes it much easier to read because line numbers are gonna have a specific color to them. You'll see that the G values are all highlighted with this yellow color. The Zs are orange. My X and Y are a black and a dark blue. We have our feed rates outlined. So it just gives us a lot of information so we can see what we wanna change. Now in here, we have the ability to also go find and replace lines. We can go to specific lines. We could resequence our line numbers in case we deleted some lines and needed to resequence. I could come in and say, let's remove any blank lines. And it's just gonna go through and remove any blank lines from the code. If your machine wanted no spaces, you could remove your spaces. And you could even go in and modify your feed rates and spindle RPMs throughout the whole file by a specific percentage if you wanted to. Now you wanna be careful with doing some of this stuff. A lot of this, like the spaces and blank lines and stuff, we can fix that through the post so you don't have to come in and do this every time, but still an option. Now, right here we have our view, so it lets us expand and collapse the code based on tool changes, comments, compare codes. But with the NC Editor Pro, we could even go in and backplot our geometry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my coordinate system and I'm gonna turn on verification. Now, if I scroll into here, I can rotate my part and actually see it. Let me turn off the axis here. And that's kind of how I'm gonna see my part. Now, from here, I could say reset and then I could say play. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring in the tools and run the exact job that I ran. And I could either have it show me the back plot, show me the tool path that's there, or just see it cut the part. The difference is this isn't running off of what Bobcad created by itself. It's not running off its own tool path like the normal simulation. It's running it based on what the G code here is telling it to run. So let me hide the back plot. And these are the rest roughing cuts. It's working its way back up. There's our flatlands. Here's our ball mill here. We could speed it up a little bit so we could see it. But this is a really good way to find out if you are going to have any problems. There is our 3 ace tool. We can see we have a rapid move somewhere wrong right in here. So we would have to go make sure that our Z value is set to the right height for when we did that move. So if we look in here, we can actually scroll down and in. And there's our tool. We make our cut. We do that. And then we'll see we don't have it retract. So we have to go in and fix this can cycle that we got right here because it's not retracting back up to the Z plane when it's doing it. So there's something wrong in the post processor. This would be something you would wanna talk to the tech support guys about. They may need to go in and modify that set of code. So then I'm done with the verification. I know that I have a problem, but at this point, I'm not gonna go fix it. I'm okay with it. I just need to go and correct a couple things in the post processor. So after those things are kind of corrected, I can go up to this tools section here and I could look at toolpath statistics. 
But really what I'm in this for is for the start DNC transfer. So start DNC transfer allows me to send via an RS-232 cable to my machine. And the way we set this up, and this is something that after you set it up, it'll save, but you set up your COM port, you set up your baud rate, your parity, your data bits, your stop bits, the discard and all, and then your flow control. Over here under the communication protocols, we have delays that we could add to either the character or the line, as well as timeouts, or even adding to the beginning of a file or the end of a file, or even the front or the end of a line, you can add in certain things. So if every line on your machine, when it's done and ready to go out to the machine, needs a percent sign, then you could go in and say, add this to the end of each line. But again, most of that stuff should be done when we have the post processor on our end, when we modify the post. If there's certain things you need, we wanna know those things so we can make a post that you won't have to come in and add this. All you'll have to do is make sure your serial connection is set up properly and then either send or receive to your machine. To get this information, you're gonna to wanna to consult the manual of your machine, see if it's in there. Otherwise, you may have to get in touch with the machine dealer or search online to find out what settings you should be using for your RS-232. And then after you have all that set up, you'll just say send. I don't have a machine really to run, but it is going to try and send through this fake port that I have on this computer. So it's just sending to nowhere right now. You'll have it showing up at your machine if all of this information is set up correctly. Now, if you're not using an RS-232, you can completely ignore this. Take your NC file, put it on a flash drive, plug it into your machine, and load it right from your flash drive, and that'll work as well. So when I'm all done, I'll just close out of this DNC, and then I can close my NC editor. And that concludes the video on posting an RS-232 communications from inside of the Bobcam for Rhino.